I'm Josh Evans and I love to help businesses build the right culture within their organizations so that they can be more profitable. Do you want more engaged employees? Do you want your company to be more productive? Well, I'm going to show you how to do that. And I'm going to share with you the tools that I've used with hundreds of companies varying in size from 60,000 person conglomerates down to five person teams. So get ready and join me so we can build the right culture for your business. Good morning. I'm Joshua Evans. Welcome back to my show. I'm helping people fix their company cultures. Whether you're in a leadership position or you're in a lower position or you own the company, my goal is to give you just knowledge and information to share some of the stuff I've seen out there in the trenches to help you make the most phenomenal company that you you can. So it's so funny, I got into a discussion recently, but what, but what I want you to catch today is that to progress, whether personally or professionally, for you to progress, you have to stop being paranoid. You have to stop being paranoid. It's the only way that you can move forward. And I think a lot of people have this mentality of there's some sort of sinister thing in the background or in the shadows that, that might jump out if you don't just stay vigilant, right, and protective of everything that you have. And there's not. I, I really think that there's too many people out there that have this paranoia that just attaches themselves to, to your mentality. And then every situation that you approach, you carry that with you. You carry some sort of angst or some sort of worry or some sort of anxiety into every situation that you walk into. And that's not the way to live. I think that's a very passive or very negative perspective on the world. Nobody, nobody's out to get you. Know that nobody is out to get you. It's funny, I read this thing the other day. It's like people on the freeway, they're not there to inconvenience you. They're really just trying to to get to where they're trying to go to, right? And so have you ever been in traffic? You're like, oh, this guy, he's cut me off again. Or why are these people jumping in my lane? They have no bearing on what's going on in your world, but somehow you've made their lane change about you. Right? It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's, all, I mean, it's pretty narcissistic, right? To think that the rest of the world is bending its will to impact you, right? To affect you. And the funny thing is, is the more you look for, if you look for ways in which people are, are messing with you or, or doing negative or bad things to you, the more things like that you're going to see. Just like, we, we've heard that, like, bad things happen in threes. They don't. They don't. We just say that, right? It makes us feel better. So if two bad things happen, all of a sudden now we're looking for the third bad thing. And you can just pick anything out of the world. Be like, oh, look, there it is. I was targeted by that third thing. That's why. But that's not how it is. It's not. To progress, we have to stop being so paranoid. To progress, we have to stop being paranoid. It's funny, if you're, if you're watching on TV, you see all these boxes. i got a ridiculous amount of empty boxes and half full boxes all over my office right now. We've had so many trainings and we, we've, we've been uh, visiting so many different uh, associations and companies. We, we just, it's been crazy these past few months. And so it's, it's great to kind of have some time to step back and, and get back in my office for a little bit. Um, but it's pretty crazy during, during this time out there. I, there's some really interesting stuff that I've run into. But I really think that, that, there's a lot of people out there, especially if you're like in a middle management role and you're you're head to head against other managers or something like that, and y'all y'all both want to get the promotion or something like that. It's easy to feel like other people are out to get you, but the vast majority of us, that's just us being narcissistic. It's us trying to serve ourselves and think that we're the center of the universe. But here's the thing: we're not. Right? Nobody's out to get you. Have you noticed that a lot of times we're, we're very protective of our information, of our own knowledge, and we don't want to share with other people? We don't tip our hat, right? We keep, we keep it close to the vest, as they say. It's funny. I, I, I was working for this organization one time, and we're, we're all getting together, and we're going to have to present our slides to the board of this company. And so it was the entire sales team of this organization. We all got together, and we're, we're going through our slides, and there's one salesperson She's like, no, no, I'm going to go ahead and put together my own slides. And like, we all have our information and our knowledge and our specific clients. It's not like, com it's competitive to a certain level. Like, hey, let's see who can, who can make more money for the company. But we weren't trying to steal clients from each other. So it wasn't that kind of competition. It was healthy, supportive competition, right? Against, against other companies, not against each other. But there's one salesperson in this company, and they, they, they kept everything very close to the vest. And they were quiet about it all the time. And they were working on their own presentation. And they didn't want to join in. So we were all sharing this information between each other, except for this one person that didn't really want to be a team player, right? I think they were paranoid that we were going to steal their information and try to take their clients or make them look bad. And I don't know why they would think that because it's, it's, it was a really nice team atmosphere. So we all developed our slides together. We, we, we made our own slides and we put them together so they were all very coherent. And then we all turned them in. And this person, this other person who was scared about what everybody else was thinking turned in their, their slides separately. And they thought that we were trying to, to usurp their power or 
their clients or their numbers that they were bringing into the organization. And we weren't. They were being so narcissistic. They thought it was all about them. Sure enough, we turned them in. And I mean, apparently, because I wasn't in the meeting actually when, they, when the board reviewed them. But the board reviewed all of them. They thought it looked great. And then there's this one set of slides that's totally different from the rest. And it wasn't better. I'm not going to say it was worse. But because there was not, they weren't coherent piece of the rest of the message, they could tell it's like this person's not part of the team. That person was slowly phased out of a lot of larger clients. And they we did that on purpose because this person obviously is in it for themselves. They're not in it for the, for the good of the organization. They're not a team player. They're paranoid. And it was apparent even to our board members and, and to our uh, executive team, it was apparent to them that we, most of us, wanted to work together, right? We were, we were trying to find ways to collaborate and to, to build stuff together. And if I knew somebody, another client, that somebody else had, like, hey, let me make introductions. But this one person were just so paranoid and so narcissistic. They thought the world was out to get them. And they weren't. The world's not out to get anybody. It's not. Things are unfolding for us, not happening to us. But this person took this one kind of perspective, and it, and it cost them a lot of their success. They, they ended up leaving the company eventually, but their, their biggest problem was that they, they refused to be part of the team because they thought everybody else was trying to steal their information or trying, trying to milk their clients from them. It was crazy. It was crazy. I mean, in this sort of a situation, collaboration is always best. I don't care if, if you are working with a large team or just a couple of managers or if you're in an executive role, collaboration is always the best perspective to take because you're going to gain knowledge that you didn't have before. You're going to gain that extra perspective and you're collaborating. Collaboration is working together is always going to get you further than running by yourself. There's a phrase I heard from, from a really interesting guy. He said that, if you want to go fast, go by yourself. But if you want to go far, you go with a team. You have to be collaborative, right? To progress, you have to stop being paranoid. So everybody's like, okay, how can I do that? Well, here's, there's two, two, I was thinking about, there's two ways in which you can kind of stop being paranoid about the things in your life, whatever, the personal or professional that might be affecting you. First off, realize that you are not the center of the universe. You're not the center of everyone's universe. I mean, you, you might think that you are, might feel like you are at times, but you are not the end-all, be-all to everybody else in the world. You know, there's an old episode of, of Growing Pains. I haven't even thought about that show in a long time, but there's an old, there's an old episode of Growing Pains where Mike Seaver stays home from school because he's sick. And he stays home, and then towards the end of the day, he turns on the TV for a second, and like this, I guess, some music starts, and then he, he turns off the TV for a minute, and then he turns it back on, and the music's still going, but it's further along now. He's like, wait, huh? And he, like, he realizes that the TV didn't stop playing when he pressed stop. And I, this is obviously before DVR. And then he hears the school bus outside of his house. And he's like, wait, people still went to school even though I didn't go to school. And he had this like huge realization that the world keeps moving with or without him. It, that, and it's, it's, it's a pretty interesting thing to think about for yourself, right? Have you ever been on vacation and stuff keeps going at work? Oh, how did that happen? I'm not saying we're not essential, but we're not nearly as essential as we think we are, right? The world doesn't, doesn't rise and set on our will, does it? Right? So that's, you're not the center of the universe. Maybe you're the center of your own universe, but you're not the center of everyone's universe. And it, and it behooves you to realize that, all right? So people aren't looking at you as a target to come after. They aren't, all right? And the second thing you can really do is you look for opportunities to help other people. Don't look for ways to help yourself. I mean, of course, you need to do those sorts of things, but don't look at ways to hinder other people. Don't be worried about other people. Don't be paranoid that other people are going to take your information or run with it or steal your ideas. That's not, that's not how the world works. People rarely actually steal other people's ideas and make something of it. Look for opportunities to help others. So I have a good friend, right? a buddy of mine, his name's Alex. And early on, we were just we were just buddies, right? We played in a band together. It was a lot of fun. He asked me to come into his band, and that was a lot of fun, right? He didn't feel like I was trying to take the thunder over. I we played different styles of guitar. It was totally all right. And then years later, we ended up working in similar similar companies, right? And we were progressing in set totally separate paths. But all of a sudden, an opportunity would show up over here, and I'd be like, you know what? I I should tell Alex about that. It's not it's not my wheelhouse, but I bet I bet he would appreciate that. So I'd call him, and say, hey man, you should I should introduce you to this guy. And so he's developing his own relationships. Fast forward a couple more years, and he goes, hey Josh, I just met somebody you need to meet for your TED talk, and boom, all of a sudden I'm uh, I'm working with this guy who does international 
uh, relief and I'm able to bring him into my TED talk all because we're collab- we're helping each other out, right? It's a pretty, it's cool to have like a selfless friendship, right? Or a selfless working relationship with somebody like that where you're not trying to, to undermine the other person. You just, anytime you see an opportunity to help them, they get to help them. And that's, that's, what you, that's what we all need to do, right? We need to look for opportunities to help other people. We're a lot more likely to obtain help from them if we've spent time trying to help other people too. So if you want to be really self, selfish about it, right? You'll get more back if you help other people. But that's not the way you should look at it. You should look at it as the opportunity to help other people live to their potential. To progress, you have to stop being paranoid. You have to stop being paranoid. Nobody's out to get you, Right? And just because somebody's obtained something, whether it's status or a promotion or because they've obtained business, doesn't mean that you've lost something. All right? It doesn't mean you've lost out on something. Just because somebody else gets something doesn't mean that you didn't get it. All right? It's not a zero-sum game. Game. Huh? It's not. And so we need, we need to progress. We have to stop being paranoid. Helping other people is going to be huge, right? So, so to recap those things, first off, remember, you're not the center of everyone's universe. I know it's hard to hear. But you're not the center of everyone's universe. The second thing is look for opportunities to help others. Right? Not to use others, to help others. So I had an intern conversation, right? I want to bring bring this full circle. So I was I was up at this event in Vermont recently, and it was beautiful, oh, beautiful time of year to go. It was about a week short of the big, you know, leaf change. So I'm, I'm a little disappointed I didn't stay around, but it was beautiful. And I had this sidebar conversation over a beer with somebody. In terms of they're, they're in a middle management position, and they've been there for about two, three years, and there's a couple other people with similar levels of um, work history that they work with that are also managers, right? And uh, I guess some sort of a vice presidentship opened up at this organization. So I was talking to this guy, his name was Steve, and I was like, so Steve, tell me what you do, and we were talking, you know, he's really, he really more manages people than anything else, right? Um, but his group happens to be a finance group. And so he says, well, yeah, you know, I'm in this VP role. I was like, oh, cool. Do you like it? He's like, oh, yeah, it seems like a lot of fun. Uh, sometimes I feel like, you know, the other guys are, are kind of hard-nosed, but it's all right. It's like, great, that's cool. So wh- wh- where are you planning on going with that? Because I'm always, I'm always interested to know where are people going, right? Not, not where they are right this moment, where do they want to go, right? Those are those aspirations that I think are so important to everybody. And he started to say, well, I, there's a VP spot that's going to be opening up soon. And um, I'm really kind of pursuing it, but I feel like, all the other managers are looking for ways to like talk down about me in the meeting. And so that strikes me. All of a sudden, he feels like these people that he's worked with for years, right? These other managers that he's collaborated with that have other teams similar to his, that now they're like against him. I mean, there's obviously at any organization, there's going to be a few people that are really just in it for themselves. And of course, if one person gets a promotion over another, one side's going to be more disappointed. I, I get that. But he felt like they were undermining his authority like they were going around his back like they were talking badly about him to their management right to their upper management i said why do you think he's like i don't know it's just a feeling i was like that sounds a bit paranoid steve and he's like well you know i i just think that you probably don't know you know the insides of my company that happens and fair enough i don't know all the inner workings of his company but I said, so what have you been doing? I mean, obviously you think this is happening. What are you doing? He's like, well, you know, I'm kind of developing a plan to um, show how I'm better than those those guys. And I was like, show how you better how? He's like, well, I was going to highlight some of the things that they've done incorrectly. I said, like, ooh, you need to stop there, Steve. You need to stop there. He's about to act based on his paranoia. It's not even a real thing, right? But he's about to take an action where he puts together like a list of things that his um, that his colleagues have failed to do well and then send that. Who, who are you going to send that off to? You know what that looks like? That looks like you are the negative force. All of a sudden, you're talking badly about all your coworkers. It's not going to turn out the way you think it will. I was, tell, I, was, I was like, Steve, wait a second. You're going to send a bunch of negative stuff about your other managers to, to your boss so you can get the promotion? He goes, well, you know, I think they're already doing it. So I said, like, you need to not do that at all. If you want the promotion, you're looking at this the entire wrong way. And we had this long conversation and what the, the crux of it was like, look, you have now become that negative force. You're the one that is telling bad things about your coworkers. You're the one that's undermining them. All because of his paranoia. The best way to get, to get that sort of a role, right? The best way to, to move into that role is to show that you're worthy. Not to cut other people down, to show you're worthy for that role. So if anything, maybe make a list of all the stuff that you love about your team and about the managers that you're on and how you would how you would do a great job managing them. <gasps> Think about that for a second. 
Instead of talk about why they're not good, talk about why you work well with them. That's what they want, somebody in a leadership role, not somebody that's going to undermine everybody else. And I don't know if he's actually going to take my advice. My advice to him was to talk about how you work well with them as a team and how you would continue to work well in that sort of position because that, that's, that's what they're really looking They're not looking for somebody who's going to talk poorly about their coworkers. They're looking for somebody that can lead, that can manage. And, and going, going negative like that is a surefire way to be stuck in middle management forever. So uh, if you're like Steve, right? So if you're like him and you're in your own organization – and you think that other people at your level are kind of talking badly about you or cutting you down or, or hindering you from progressing in your career in some way or another, here's my advice to you. Stop being paranoid. The sun doesn't rise and set on your will. These people are not out to get you. They're out for themselves, of course. We all, I mean, at, all, at some level, we're all out just to make do stuff good for us. But we're not out to put other people in a different place. We're not, we're not there to break others down. If you want to progress... Stop being paranoid. You have to. Paranoia is a ridiculous thing. It's a wasted emotion. It, it's just, it's not real. All right? All you have to do, look for ways to help other people. We talked about that. Just look for ways to help other people. You look more selfless than you look better. People will appreciate you. People will respect you. And then from that, people will want to help you. Right? To progress, you have to stop being paranoid. Anyway, I'm Josh Evans, and I'm just so happy you joined me here today, and I hope you join me again next week. If you if you want to like shoot me an email or send me a question, I'm happy to talk about it on the air. You can reach out to me at info at joshuamevans.com, or you can hit me up on any social media at enthusiastic I look forward to hearing from you. Y'all have a great rest of your day.